Previously in Ron Sailing, we visited the last couple of islands in Gunayala before setting sail towards Linton Bay, 43 miles west. Linton Bay lies between Isla Linton and Puerto Lindo. It's a popular place among cruisers, and many leave their boats here for an extended time. <laughs> you want to take a swim? No. <laughs> what is it? It's a Portuguese man of war. It's a uh, poisonous, uh, what do you call it? Manette. Jellyfish. Jellyfish. Two of them. I don't think they are deadly, but uh, you get a pretty bad sting. Isla Linton is private owned, but the white building has been taken over by monkeys. We only saw these two, but they were very curious. We kept our distance, trying not to make them feel threatened. I think you want some food. Oh, they are so cute. Oh, Where is his friend? Up in the other tree, palm tree. They seem to be pretty content with life. Tourists stop by here to look at the monkeys. So whenever the monkeys hear a boat coming, they start looking. Linton Bay has a marina which offers haul-out services. There's not much around here, but there are a few restaurants in the village Puerto Lindo on the left-hand side. Yesterday I cleaned the engine and degreased it 
and today I'm going to start with the service of the engine, change these filters, the oil filters, the two diesel filters, I'm also going to change the impeller and this cog on the inside of the impeller pump and uh, put some new grease in the dripless uh, shaft seal for the propeller shaft and uh, yeah, fix some electrical connections on the starter motor and we made another decision as well you might remember that we had some problems with one of the injectors that was leaking <coughs> and uh, yeah we made the decision here to not fix it now and uh, keep the temporarily fixed that we have on one of the injectors it's a leak between the sleeve pipe and the injector and it's not much and it's not leaking now uh, it's totally fixed so there's no leak and I think it will be good for probably many years as it is but it's always nice to fix these things of course so we will do it eventually but we will not do it here in Panama because what we're risking <clears throat> when we're pulling these injectors out is that we will loosen the whole pipe that the injector is sitting in and then we need to remove the whole top of the engine and you also need a special tool to in, uh, install a new pipe uh, injector sleeve and we don't have that those type of tools and it's really hard to find a good mechanic here as well so this job with the injectors will have to wait until we are in Hawaii probably uh, it's one of those decisions that are hard to make because of course you want the engine to be perfect all the time but I think it's the best decision because the risk we're taking if I'm starting to pull out these injectors here that is that we're going to be have like a month long delay. I started by removing the impeller pump house to change the cog. We normally change oil filter every second oil change. Adding some oil to the rubber gasket helps the seal to the engine block. So I just took the old filter out and as you can see the top of the filter has, I don't know, if it has corroded away, it's stuck inside the holder of the filter. So I need to take some pliers and take that out from in there. So this is the way it should look and uh, this is the old filter. And it's not very old, it's, uh, I don't know, four months, something like that. So, I think we've been having some bad fuel, or at least some water in the, in the tank, because you can really see that it's been corroding in here. And you can see in the bowl here that there's water down there, mm. and probably some bacteria, diesel bacteria. So, yeah. It's good to change filters. This Volvo Penta engine is self-priming, but when you change the fuel filters, the fuel system needs to be bled. It was also time to change the oil in the gearbox. It 
Turns out that we have another problem. One of the engine brackets is cracked. And I haven't seen it before and yeah. It's uh yeah, we'll take it off and show it to you guys. So this is the piece. It's not uh nothing hard to fix. It's just curious how it happened. Must be in some stress. Really bad stress on this. But I guess we just weld it and it should be good for another 30 years maybe. So I will remove this cover so I can uh, adjust the rockers. Uh, or maybe I don't need to adjust them, but I will see if the, the measurement on them is correct. So the valve clearance should be uh, 0.3 millimeters on both the exhaust and um, the inlet valve. Uh, on most of them it was actually a little bit too less than that, like uh, 0.10 and uh, that's not good so I'm adjusting those, actually I'm adjusting all of them so they will be the, have the same adjustment. Are you tired? Yeah, I'm a bit tired. It's been going on the whole day. Yeah. And now it's almost 8 p.m. Yeah, I know. <sighs> Good job. Yeah, I hope so. We haven't started it yet, but I think we'll be okay. Should we start it? Okay, let's try here. Yeah. That sounded good. I will check the valves again tomorrow. And uh, because now I ran the engine hot, and tomorrow I will check the valve clearance again. Just to be sure. Yeah, and we'll try to find a a welder in here who can fix this. Other than that, I think... No, we still need to put some grease in the tripless shaft seal. But... That's done for today. Yeah, definitely. But no beer. <laughs> oh no! No beer on the boat. Oh. Panna Marina lies close to Linton Bay. There is a narrow path through the mangroves, or you can go with the dinghy. We went there to check if they could weld the bracket, and they could, so Yua went back the next day to get it fixed. 
The marina is built on top of a swamp in the mangroves and it's run by a French couple. And he put an extra plate on it as well on this side. So hopefully it won't happen again. I think the problem originated from that there is an old weld over here. And probably the guy who did that weld sometime, he probably took this piece and stuffed it directly into water after the weld. So in, in doing that he made the steel more brittle. And I think that's why it has been sheared off from vibration. Because normally that shouldn't happen with mild steel. If it would have been stainless, I would have understood it. But in this case, it really shouldn't happen. So I think we'll be good now. So now we're ready for the Panama Canal. Back aboard Ron, I lifted the engine to put the bracket back in place. to me yesterday. You forgot that the stairs were removed and <laughs> you just tread straight down here yeah. and hit your leg. I just opened the hatch, didn't look down, turned myself around and <laughs> we're gonna go down and there was nothing there. Yeah. And it is pretty steep actually. Yeah, it is. And it gave me... Oh, but it feels... Yeah. So it feels great to be finished with this uh, service and as, especially the valves we uh, haven't actually been doing adjusting the valves since we left Sweden on New Year's Eve we had brought together a bunch of cruisers for dinner at a restaurant in Puerto Lindo later in the evening we celebrated the new year at Panamarina with live music by a local band and by our fellow sailor, Barry, the old sea dog. Thank you so much for watching and we hope you liked this episode. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. 
Thank you and see you next week.